whenever I come into a record shop, I always go to the soundtracks bit first. And um, I got this one, Escape from New York. I tried to look for They Live. They, it wasn't here. I imagine it'd be quite repetitive because it's basically one with all the way through. But yes, that's an old favourite. First thing I picked up was Curtis Blow record. I think mainly because I like the, the sort of crux points between different types of music and I think this one just really finds the right point before, I don't know, disco and soul music and into rap music or hip hop. And I just find that kind of thing really interesting when people are just kind of half singing. I picked out this Chris Christopherson collection of the publishing demos. Good was good enough for me. Good enough for me and Bobby McGee. I saw him play at South by Southwest a couple of years ago and was just when I was getting really, really into country music and he played an amazing set. I'm kind of interested in this stuff where he's kind of done these quite raw demos as far as I have read about it. It's quite different from how the famous version is sounding. Um, I've got a Laura Cantrell album, the American folk singer. Have you forgotten? Have you forgotten? I think this is one of her early albums, but um, I got another one of her albums called Where, when, where the Roses Bloom Again, When the Roses Bloom Again, I think it's called. And she's got a really nice voice, so I'm going to check that one out. So the first item that I've uh, picked out is the Willie Nelson album, Shotgun Willie. And I'm so glad I met you yesterday. If your English sounds quite like a rude, quite risque album title, but I don't think it's meant that way particularly. Um, I don't know much about this album, but I'm a big Willie Nelson fan, and I know that Alexis um, recommended this one, I think. Didn't you? It's the best. Picks up this Bob Welsh record. Bob Welsh was in uh, Mac after Peter Green, but before Lindsay Buckingham, and was kind of their main songwriter. And um, once he'd left, he he played played a lot of, sort of similar music. But when he played this album to the rest of Fleetwood Mac, they um, they basically disowned him and didn't want to didn't want to know, so I'm intrigued as to what was so offensive by that. <laughs> <laughs> I picked out this DVD, Tripping with Cave. See, I think, as long as, because I can let this go really easily. Yeah. <laughs> I think that God would rather you took that mushroom. Mm -hmm. I'm never going to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> See it? So why are you doing this one? Doing what? <laughs> what are you doing? It's a film about Will Oldham taking magic mushrooms and I think it's just a kind of short documentary. Um, I'm a big fan of Will Oldham's music and I've always read about this, this film and it's probably going to be quite entertaining to watch on the uh, tour bus, yeah. I, I think, I imagine. Um, it's an Etta James record. We used to actually go on stage to uh, an Etta James song called Down in the Basement, an ed edit of that song. Um, and so I just got this one because I think it might be quite good to play on the bus or whatever. Hopefully it's a little number. Another one, another soundtrack I went for was the Twin Peaks one. I tried to get it online, uh, but they only had like awful Muzak versions. Uh, this one's quite Muzak -y, not anyway, in a, in a way, I suppose, but um, I really like it. I want to still on the bus. So there. I've also picked out this collection of duets by Tammy Wynette and George James. I'm gonna leave this town till you decide Which one you want the most, be my quick stars or me? Milwaukee, here I come. 
I'm a big fan of the Bob Dylan radio show, and he very often plays um, these duets, which is quite a, a good recommendation, I think. I'm also going to buy this Charles Haywood record, despite the fact that it's um, a tribute to Mark Rothko, who I don't really like that much. I'll buy anything that he does. He, um, he's a really good drummer and, and musician, and he played on the last Hot Chip album. This is uh, Activities of Dust record. I couldn't resist buying anything that had Doug Sharon on drums, Jeff Parker from Tortoise on drums, and Bernie Worrell from Funkadelic and Talking Heads. I guess, on synthesizers, and I'm hoping that's good. <laughs> this one's classic, John Cale, Paris 1919. This one's got um, a lot of outtakes and alternate versions and things. It's got John Cale looking very dapper there. The white suit, well I assume it's white, it's a black and white photograph, so it could be pale pink or a pale blue possibly. I'm going to buy this Swamp Dog compilation of two albums. And can someone please explain this word called equality? He's a Southern Soul singer from the, still making records now, but made a lot of the best ones in the 70s. Um, we all listened to the song God Bless America for What a lot when we were on tour a couple of years ago. It's probably my favourite tune that I've discovered. Um, this is a Hungarian gypsy music CD. <laughs> I'm making a documentary about a Hungarian guy and um, I'm looking for um, inspiration for the soundtrack. And, and he, he's a big fan of Hungarian gypsy music so he may recognise some of the tunes on here. I'm not going to try and pronounce any of them but um, I always said girls are dangerous. They don't manage to pronounce, pronounce it. it <laughs> yeah. My Hungarian is, is flawless. <laughs> uh, last one, this is actually recommended to me by Joe. Brothers, I would give my life for my brothers. When we're driving and it's late with my brother, sad next to me. Right, here's Paul Simon with the song album, You're the One. I actually bought it for, the, for that song. You're the one, uh, you broke my heart, you made me cry. And you're the one, uh, you broke my heart, you made me cry. When we were making the recent album, um, we were trying to um, replicate the feel of that particular song we were watching it on YouTube, which has got a real kind of like uh, easy groove. Um, not sure if we succeeded, but, um, but it's definitely a good, a good inspiration there. This is a Terry Riley CD. But this is a record which seems to have vocals, which is quite rare for Terry Riley to be singing as well as playing piano. And he plays harpsichord as well. Um, so that's something I know nothing about what it would sound like, but I just, a bit like Charles Hayward, I tend to buy anything that Terry Riley is involved with. It's a all record, Joe Zawinall from Weather Report. And it has his version of a song he wrote called In a Silent Way. My main reason for buying this is because he looks a bit like my dad and for Alexis birthday uh, he wanted us to all wear moustaches so I'm going to use this as a model for my moustache. I've got this one, Sisters of Mercy. When I used to make sandwiches there was this Australian opera singer and um, <laughs> yeah, he'd always, this other girl would put this record on and then go, uh, what is this shit? What is this shit? 
Have you got uh, <laughs> Black Betty by Ram Jam? I like that one. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it reminded me of him, so, so that's why. So, so. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> Bye.